It used to be like this a little bit, but she has pretty much doubled in size and... Hey, what's up Reefers? I owe you updates. I know, I owe you a lot of updates. So today, we're gonna catch up. I'm gonna give you all the updates that you ever want, all five tanks. First, I'm gonna show you the 45 gallon tank, which I think is having some major issues. Second, I'm gonna show you my nine gallon planted tank, which have some fish that's really confused. Third, I'm gonna give you an update on the 10 gallon budget reef and its progress. Fourth, I'm gonna show you my latest pride and joy, the axolotl tank right behind me. It's really different now. And finally, everybody has been asking me about this. What is up with the 150 gallon tank built? I'm gonna tell you right now in this video. Now you're gonna think, hey, in a purple reefer, we're gonna be here all night. You're gonna go for all five tanks. Well, I'm gonna do it fast. With each update, I'm gonna try to limit myself to just five minutes, because I know I have a tendency to ramble. So without further ado, let's take a look at a 45 gallon tank and see what is going on with that tank right there. All right, reefers, welcome back. It has been a while since I talked about the 45 gallon tank, and the last time where I left off was that I'm having some issue with the tank, and that issue unfortunately continues. As you can see over here, we got the kryptonite that I fragged up. It is not doing too well. It's kind of shrunken up. Uh, the one in the back was doing really well, but recently it's kind of looking a little sad as well. It's starting to fall into the pattern that in all my previous tanks, certain corals would do really well and certain ones will just kind of slowly um, wither away. Same, same thing with the Akens. So I noticed it's these LPS, the fleshy LPS like the Aken and the kryptonite can king that's not doing well at all. Uh, thankfully, the Euphilias, like the Torch and the Frog Spawn, are still doing fantastically. The light has not been on for too long, so these actually get much larger as they go on. And as you can see, the Soft Coral is absolutely loving it. Look at this. The uh, Green Tree Leather, also the Pink Tree Leather, or the Finger Leather, whatever you want to call it, they're doing fantastic. Xenia, I did notice, it kind of stopped pulsing, so something is up. However, the Zoas, the Zoas absolutely exploded. Loaded. Whatever it is, they're loving it. Look at the Zoas. They just started multiplying and it's kind of ridiculous. The SPS are doing okay. Whatever's happening to the tank does not seem to really affect the SPS, which is kind of unique because usually they're the first ones to go. Uh, the Frax, I'm not going to show you the Frax rack. It's so dirty. I'm so embarrassed. But the uh, Space Invader Bacteria in the back is looking good. I've been um, starting to mount frags with magnets i'm probably going to talk a little bit more about these magnets later on i kind of touch on it on instagram uh, but it it's a larger discussion so i'm not going to go into it right away and you notice that i do have some bubble algae growing on the gyri i have not really been touching it too much and i'll show you why because i've been focusing on the freshwater tank a lot more for whatever reason but overall i think like in terms of tank health most things seems well. No, no, no. I gotta take that back. <laughs> I'll, I'll just be lying to myself if I say most things is, hap is happy. I'll say maybe like two thirds of things are happy. Uh, certain, uh, well, the Euphilia seems to be doing pretty well. Uh, the Softies are doing exceptionally well. Um, the MPS seems to be doing all right. Like the Fan Dancer is really happy. And you may notice that the two clamps that I got, uh, especially this one, the Peco. This is the fifty dollars Peco clamp is doing beautifully. If you look along the rims and you can see the white spot. Those are the new growth. So it has been doing really well. The mental extension is fantastic. And I have been broadcast feeding the tank uh, two or three times a week with a bunch of like reef nutrition products. Um, and over the weekend right here, I actually picked this little guy up from my local reef club WAMAS meeting. Uh, this actually came from Pacific East. And this clam is a little unique, and not because it's so small, but because this is possibly a hybrid between a Derisa and a Maxima. Because if you look at the shell, right, you see uh, Derisa is usually smooth, but you got some, I think it's called shoot? I can't pronounce it. Uh, and at the same time, look at the mantle. They got some spots right there, some spot that's uh, distinguished of this, uh, like a squamosis. So it's really unique. And sliding over here, I didn't talk about this piece. This piece actually I picked up from um, uh, frag swap and then caster that fish place that pet place uh, this actually came from fish hex I bought it from Travis and I just really like the growth pattern right there and right there that is my pet 
Aptasia Anatomy has been there for a while. I had the opportunity to siphon it up, but I was like, uh, you know, let's leave it. Let's leave it. And over here, we got the Pandora Palizoas. Now, I used to have a large mini colony. I actually moved it to the 10 gallon as a testing coral. And then we'll get to that later on in this video. But the major concern right now is some of these fleshy, these fleshy uh, LPS, they're just closing up. One speculation uh, from Eat Sleep Reef, who I respect a lot, is Flow. Because I installed the, uh, the Cyclone, H2 Pro Cyclone. Fantastic, fantastic power head, by the way. Really good bang for the buck. Super, super strong. Too strong for this tank. I left it running for about three or four weeks. Oh, two, two and a half, three weeks, actually, not that long. Uh, I doubt to as low as possible, but I suspect, and he also think that maybe there's something up with the currents. So I'm gonna do a full water test. I actually got a bunch of um, test kits right here that I'm gonna dig into a little bit later, a later video, but I'm gonna do a full, a full water test, whatever test I could, and possibly do an ICP test as well to make sure nothing else is out of ordinary. And we'll do a test and see exactly what is going on. But yeah, just these, um, these fleshy LPS, I'm having some major issue with. I uh, really want to figure out, get to the bottom of it. The Black Widow Anatomy was out front and center for about a month and a half and it was doing beautifully. And then it disappeared. It kind of went back into hiding again. So I don't know what's going on. And this Space Invader is actually really be behaving right now for this video. Normally the uh, sweeper is food blown all over the place. Well, you know what? It's actually starting to send out some sweeper. Imagine that, except times maybe six. This is a mean coral. All right. Oh, that's one more thing. That's one more thing that's super concerning. The gold hammer, the gold wall hammer has been doing so well for me for like two, two and a half years. See the backside? The backside, I don't know what happened. It's all receded. I see some polyps starting to peek out. But you see how the side is all kind of busted up, like the flesh is like peeling off. That is not good at all. But at least that is not brown algae. Oh, sorry, not brown algae, the brown jelly issue. So it almost looks like the, the, the tissue is kind of like uh, receding pretty badly. Just like all the other, just like the A-can, look at the A-can. The tissue kind of receded to the center. So something is going on, something is going on. I'm back here, dude, look at the Christmas tree worm. They're all accounted for. Um, Really healthy, really happy, still really alert. So I think dosing reef nutrition products, like I just dose um, Phyto, Oyster Egg, IOE, a mix, really help and they're obviously finding food to eat. But besides um, LPS, the tank is pretty much on autopilot, but I really need to figure out what is going on so I can stop it before it gets too late. I feel like it may be too late for some of the ACANs already. Uh, if you have any ideas, any guests, or anything that I should check out and try out to, and pay attention of, Leave a comment, please. I would, um, at this point, I'm just trying to see what's going on and see if there's any way to reverse it. Ah, <sighs> okay, so I, <laughs> sorry, a little bit long-winded, even for the 45 gallon tank. Let's move on to other tank. If any question, leave a comment. If any ideas, leave a comment. Let's move on to the nine gallon planter tank. All right, reefers or planter or whatever I should call you now, check this out. This is the, nine gallon planter tank that look like crap for, I don't think it looks that nice right now, but things are growing in, I'm learning along the way. Now, I, where do I even begin? So basically last I left off, I was trying to grow a carpet of dwarf baby tear. That did not really work out because algae started setting in and I learned a lot since. Um, I was going a little bit too fast, a little bit too aggressive with the fertilizer, the liquid fertilizer, and a little bit too aggressive with the light. So this time I learned my lesson, I restarted. I kept the soil and I planted some of the easier plants. Now granted, I still have some dwarf baby tear here because come on, dwarf baby tears. Uh, and I, there was actually some leftover from before that was surviving, actually growing back. But I replanted one small pot to kind of seed it a little bit. And over here, I picked some of these uh, plants that I cannot pronounce. <laughs> but I absolutely love, especially these type. It started out like this and started growing. Now, not everything is doing well. For example, the ones in the back, they kind of died off, turned brown. I got a poodles. But these guys that grow so much, I'm probably gonna cut it off like pretty low and then replant the top portion, hoping to get more. Now this, whatever this is, is growing really well and it's spread it a lot. Same thing with this. I've already done a really large cutting. They were growing a little bit too tall. I cut them and they started growing from the cut, right above the cut. Like every, every stem I cut, two things will pop out. And that's another thing I'm doing. 
Like for all these plants, I experimented with cutting to see how to grow back. For example, look at the last, uh, look at the back. Uh, this type, again, I don't know what type of plants it is. If you know, leave a comment. These type look kind of cool, but I'm not sure if they fit in the scape. Uh, back there, I'm really falling in love with the uh, tiger lotus. And you notice later on in another tank, I have another tiger lotus because I just really like it. I feel like that dark maroon really contrast well against like these really nice green plants and in the back is something that i picked up really recently i'm not even sure what it is but i just think that like um, the growth pattern the texture as well as the color really pops against like the darker green in the back again i don't know how to pronounce any any of this thing how do you guys keep track of all these names and furthermore how do you know how to pronounce all these plants now in the middle we got a piece of spider wood and i feel like that's really what's defining this tank before i have like a kind of tiny little piece of wood they just kind of get buried and it's like mm. so there's no real center focus of this tank uh, so i'm slowly tweaking i'm slowly tweaking now let's talk about the fish real quick and also the shrimp so i started out with the celestial pearl daniels uh, remember back then i had nine but over time i lost one and eventually i found that it actually jumped into the chop drop checker and died in there is the nastiest death. It's kind of like a, a little pool of blood and meat because back then the drop checker is in the back so I did not see it until it was way, way, way too late. Uh, so after the rescape, I think uh, I couldn't find one. I don't know where it went. And then there's another one that disappeared. I didn't even find a body. It just disappeared. So I was left with six, but I've had this six for quite a while now. I think it's about four, four weeks or four and a half, five weeks now. Actually, it's probably longer than that, actually. I'm sorry. It's probably at least like two months because I've already trimmed these uh, once or twice already. Some of them twice. Uh, so these CPDs are doing really well. I know these guys have a reputation of being really shy and reclusive. But I don't know, man. They are obviously super confused. They're like following me around. And the same thing with the Cardinal Tetris. Cardinal Tetris is a funny story. Originally, I just want a splash of color to kind of contrast against the CPD. So I, I wanted like four of these guys, but I was chatting with the fish store owner and next thing I know, I got I went home, I pulled it back, I was like, whoa, they're eight. So I immediately went onto Instagram. That's where I get most of my um, like quick advice. If any quick advice, I hop onto my Instagram and just post and ask because I'm a newbie. Um, and the consent seems to be the tank to size with this fish load should be okay. I'm kind of at the brim but I may be okay, I may be able to get away with it. So I'm keeping an eye out, make sure I don't get start getting like crazy algae issue. I'll do some water tests to make sure nitrate is not running away from me. Um, and I'm gonna step up with the water change. Um, to be honest, I have not done a water change yet in this tank. Uh, so that's that. But uh, same thing, Cardona Tetra, they're supposed to be pretty shy unless kept in large school, um, usually six plus. So I got eight, should be good. But I think the CPD, believe it or not, really bring them out. Like the first night, they're kind of like hanging in the back, hiding a little bit. But ever since then, they're just like out in center, ready for food. Look at this CPD, it's ridiculous. Have you seen? Man, get away, here. Let me see if I can scare them away. I can't even scare them away, look at that. Yeah, I got some confused fish, man. Um, yeah, CPD, I got some narrow snails here to control the algae on the glass. And of course, we're like, of course, when I'm filming, they all disappear. So I got a couple cherry shrimps in here because I really like a splash of color and I hear that cherry shrimp does really well with um, CPD, not that. I feel like most shrimp will. And I also got three of these Amano shrimps, algae shrimps, like back there. So these are supposed to be algae destroyer. They will keep the algae in check. And that's one, one thing I'm really keeping an eye on because I tear down the tank last time due to algae overrunning the tank, right? They outcompete the plants. So this time I'm just paying really special attention. If I see any algae pop up, I'm gonna just target, target it with C, uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide before it gets out of hand. And again, the light kind of came on not too long ago, but as you can see, we started seeing a little bit of pearling happening right here. Uh, usually by, by the time the light is about to turn off, now we see a lot of pearling on the uh, dwarf BBT here. See how it's starting to pearl a little bit? So it's really cool. Really loving this little setup. It's a whole different vibe compared to Reef Tank. I like to just kind of like buckle down right in front and just kind of stare at it. It's uh, it's different. It's different. And of course, equipment. If you guys have seen my old freshwater tank video, you know I have the canister filter. We got the paintball style uh, regulator coming up to the inline heater, and we got the glass lily pipe. I'm using the spinner 
I know I'm not really using a spinner properly, it should be underwater. So, because like, if you get too much surface agitation, I understand that CO2 is gonna escape. But I was having issue with surface scum. By doing this, the surface scum completely goes away. If that means losing some CO2, that's fine. I'm gonna tweak it later. I may, I may, I may adjust it. But anyways, there's a lot more I wanna get into when it comes to freshwater planet tank. I'm really excited about it because this is new to me. I know this is uh, this is like easy stuff for a lot of you guys, but for me, this is a challenge, especially since I got my ass handed to me the last round. So I'm really interested in learning more about it. There's a lot more I wanna get into, but for now, I'm way past my five minute update for the nine gallon planet tank. So let's move on. Next, we're gonna talk about the 10 gallon budget reef tank. What's going on there? Be right back. All right, all right, all right. Here it is, the very normal 10 gallon $146 budget reef tank. So as you can see, the tank is completely cycled and I have a couple pieces of test corals in there. In fact, the test corals has been in there for the last, dang, four weeks. So it has been a while. I've just not had time to really do too much with it, except for dumping these corals in there and just making sure they live. And for sure, they are alive and kicking and well. Look at this green tree ladder. This is the first coral to go into this tank. I think I cycled this tank for oh, a long time actually. Almost two months. I just kind of let it run. I dropped those uh, liquid ammonia in there. Right here, Dr. Tim, great product. And I used my swing um, hydrometer, don't kill me guys, uh, to check the salinity, to make sure it is on point. And the reason I can use this is because I, I, I mean, I checked this against the uh, refractometer and the, uh, the controller. I know it is off by 0.001. So I take that into account and I know that the, um, these kind of swing hydrometer usually is off by 0.001. So it is consistent. Even though it's slightly off, it is consistent. So I trust it, it's okay. And I, of course, double, triple check. But anyways, we're gonna talk more about cycling in a future nano tank update. But for now, this is like an overall update of all my tanks. So let's get down to it. So this tank, this right here, this Zoas, this beautiful Zoas, I actually picked this up last week at a Frex Swap for $5. Can you imagine? I forgot what type it is, but it's one of those name one. Then again, all the Zoas these days are named. Now back there, we'll see a really sad looking Kryptonite candy cane. This is an effort to quote unquote save it from the 45 gallon tank because something is off there. So I figure maybe it'll do better in a 10 gallon tank. Not so much. No, it's still hating life. So we'll see how it goes. And right there, we see the Pandora Palisoas. It lost its color after moving into this tank, even though even in the 45 gallon tank, it doesn't have that much, that much uh, color. So it is what it is. Um, these Palisoas spread really fast, so I'm trying to get rid of it. If uh, somebody local wants it, I'm gonna give it to them. Ideally, somebody who's new just want a core to test out the tank to see whether it is coral ready or not. Now, in this tank, I have three critters. I got two pretty large trochus snails right here. They're doing a fantastic job keeping the glass clean. I may have to move one of them to the 45 because it's simply not that much to eat in this tank. And then somewhere in this tank, uh, right here, uh, is the Halloween hermit crab. And the reason I'm pausing is because I see one foot hanging off. So I hope that is a molt. If that's not a molt, then I think we may have a, a casualty on our hand. Wait a minute, what is that? I don't know what's going on. Wait, what? Hold on. No, it's, I don't know what that is. I think it's a molt. I don't know, I'll keep you guys up, updated. Uh, ask me in the comment to keep you guys posted. Yeah, I think that may be a molt, unless it's just dead and hung out, which is kind of weird. Anyways, I'll keep you guys posted. Let me know. Let me know in the comment if you're interested or follow me on Instagram. You should share these kind of random stuff on Instagram. So in terms of livestock, I believe this tank is ready to go. Uh, I feel like the water may still be a little bit too new and untested for some of the more challenging stuff. But for hardier livestock, I think it is good. And I really want to get some fish in here, uh, but it is it's difficult because 10 gallon is not a lot of room. So there's uh, two ideas. First idea, I have really fallen in love with uh, 
those re, uh, I think it's called radio, uh, radio, radios, uh, foul fish. Those little tiny little guys, they're captive bred by Biotis. Uh, they're really similar to the white spotted foul fish, except these type, they actually form a symbiotic relationship with Xenias. Well, not really symbiotic, just really like Xenia. They'll sleep in there, they'll hang out around Xenias. And I want to get a pair for this in this tan uh, for a little bit. So essentially this 10 gallon tank is going to turn into almost like a uh, QT, a quarantine tank for a little bit. As those foul fish uh, get fed, fattened up, get adjusted for a little bit and we'll see how they do. They should be tiny, they have like inch and a half, right? So it should be okay for a little bit. I'm thinking like maybe keeping them here for about two months, two and a half months and then we'll move them into the 45 gallon tank and we'll see how they do. And after they're gone, I'm thinking about keeping some sort of goby here, just some or some small fish, maybe even like a, a one bang guy or like one of those baby clam for a period of time before I give them away, um, and we'll see. But for this tank, my idea is going to be mostly invert, mostly invert tank. Uh, probably a troop of sexy shrimp, maybe kind of cool, or some kind of centerpiece shrimp like a, uh, a coral bandit shrimp, maybe all right as well. Now idea number two, idea number two almost happened this past weekend. I was over at House of Tropical and I saw the smallest Watskin frogfish that looked just like Mochi and I immediately shared it on Instagram and you guys ate me on man. I was this close of getting it but I asked um, one of the store employees to feed the, um, uh, the frogfish something. So he dropped two tiny gold shrimp in there, but the frogfish were just buddy buddy with them, not eating them at all. And the shrimp at one point just even crawled on the fish. So I was like, mm, okay, this fish may be a little bit difficult to feed, so I passed on him. But uh, that kind of opened, that, uh, let's just say that started a conversation and it sparked some ideas in, uh, for me here as well. My idea is that if, if I did get the frogfish that day, right i would keep the tiny dude it's like the size of a thumbnail uh i was keep i was gonna keep the frogfish in this tank for a little bit probably a couple months two or probably three months and then, until it get a little bit larger and at the same time i'll continue to build out the 150 uh tank and at that point i'm gonna move all the fish from the 45 to the 150 and the 45 will become a species only tank for that frog fish. How awesome would that be? But of course I'll have to move out the anemone and stuff like that, which I will because it will be the home for the clownfish anyways. So that was path number two, which did not happen. In some way I'm thankful for it because holy crap, feeding a frog fish is a ton of work, let me tell you. For all those who kept frog fish, you know what I'm talking about. Now one last bit I want to share with you because I know I'm running over my five minutes mark is that I picked up a couple stocks of, um, <clears throat> mangroves <laughs> from the frag swap last week as well and um, I don't want to say they're doing well because it's <laughs> but I learned some tricks I learned that I need to uh, spray down the leaves with fresh water because I think they secrete salt I'm not 100% sure don't quote me on it uh, but supposedly that's one thing I have to do by uh, cleaning out the, the leaves so we'll see how it goes I did buy this really special um, well not special it's like 10 bucks uh, grow lights specifically for the mangrove and it's on the timer that's why it's off right now and we'll see how it goes but otherwise lighting wise for the um aquanite 8029 as well as the uh the hob filter they're working beautifully you'll see that i actually hooked up a auto top off for the 10 gallon tank i'm cheating a little bit i'm going a little bit over budget but i feel like you don't need to have this to have a successful tank so that's okay this is optional but i have it because Damn, that's too many tank to uh, top off for. So this is one less work for me. But tank's ready for fish, tank's ready for coral. Can't wait to add them in. I'll keep you guys posted. Let's move on to the next tank that I'm surprisingly really excited about. And uh, it may shock you what it is. See you over there. All right guys, I never thought this day would come. I'm actually super excited for the Axolado tank. Look at this. First of all, respect how large this little girl has become. It used to be like this a little bit, but she has pretty much doubled in size and oh man, she is a character. She has a really distinct personality. She's always right up front and center whenever I'm near the tank. Usually Axolado, they're kind of lazy, but this guy, nope. She is always swimming, running around and stuff like that. Versus the other one, the non-social one, look at that. When I got her, she was like half the size of her. 
but now they are almost the same size, but the, the personality really, they're really distinct. They have really distinct personality. Again, like I mentioned, she is like a puppy dog, like follow you around, always swimming up, trying to get to you, most likely for food, but she likes food, I guess. But for her, she's most of the time hiding, unless it's really obvious there's food and you, you got a turkey baster, then oh yeah, she's your best friend. But until then, she likes to hide, she likes to go to dark places, under broad leaves and stuff like that, and just chill out. Look at that. Look at that, she's like right up front and center. But I don't even know where to begin on this tank. Okay, let's, we got, all right, we got to start somewhere. So, story goes like this. The decor that was in this bare bottom tank before got a little bit too small because they have both grown considerably. So I need to do some kind of rescaping, right? And that's when I got inspired as I look online for different ideas for Axolotl tank. I saw that some people actually successfully keep a planted axolotl tank. I always thought that these axolotl would dig. Oh no, there's Emily ruining my video. She, okay, so I got a furball. I got, so I got a furball uh, that she can control remotely from Hong Kong. She's doing it right now. She's gonna feed my dog. But anyways, let's go back to this. We're gonna talk about our puppy dog in the water. Sorry, Emily, I'll be with you in a bit. All right, so check this out. After getting inspired by all the planted tank I see for axolotl, I thought, well, hell, I mean, I've been really interested in freshwater planted tank recently. Why don't I try to turn it into a planted tank as well, since they need more space as well. So first thing first, I got to decide on substrate. I went with soil, soil base kept with sand. I want to keep everything black because I really like the look. It looks really mysterious. And then we have one large piece of wood that I boiled in a pot, which ruined the pot because the pot looks brown. I cannot. I cannot clean it for whatever reason, it's kind of like baked into the metal. But anyways, now the wood sink. So with the wood sinking, I thought, okay, what kind of rock do I want? I want something that's not sharp, that's not to damage their delicate skin. So I went with these river rock that is rounded and also black. And I thought it looks fantastic. The black really contrasts well with some of these plants. For plants, I want something a little bit broad leaf because I feel like they like to hide. I feel like this this gives them the coverage that they really like. And obviously, look at that. Look at the girl. She's been hiding ever since we're talking about her. And I started learning about this different plants. I'm trying to grow these micro hair grass right here. I'm not sure how well they'll do simply because I'm not pumping CO2 and I'm not doing anything too aggressive in terms of fertilizing. But I do have the um, soil that I have a lot of faith in. Seems like a lot of people have good luck with soil. So we'll see how they grow. Now before I was using the uh, Z-Lite UFO in one corner um, on its own, fantastic, fantastic light. But because I'm trying to grow a carpet and no longer just plants in a corner, I decided to swap back in the ONF flat one because I have full coverage and I can easily remote control the light spectrum. And right now it's running at 50%. I can crank it up higher, but I don't think the Axolotl will appreciate a higher light simply because they do not have eyelids. So I'm trying to find the perfect balance between Axolotl and plants. And given the fact that I now have the de uh, decent hiding spot for them, the broad leaves in the back, and let me swing to the back so you can see behind the wood. There's actually a nice cave back here that sometimes they hang out in the back. Um, so I figure, okay, maybe I can I can turn up the turn up the light a little bit. Now you see here's the portal. Oh no, Emily! Emily, stop! She's feeding Mac. <laughs> oh man! So here's a portal that has been growing really well. I've been growing them out of the uh, filter in the back, and you notice that the pond matrix, the pond matrix used to be. All, all the way, all like scattered over there in the corner. Uh, since I want to do a sand bed, I move everything into the filter. And so far it has been running well. Oh, look at her right there. She's kind of like tucked in the corner. She's like, go away, don't film me. So swing back here, one thing, actually two things you may notice. Let me address them real quick. Number one, feeding dish. Because even though sand may be okay with axolotl because they can pass, the axolotl can pass the sand versus like little pebbles and maybe too large a pass, that's when they have issues. I still don't want them to ingest any sand. I don't want to take any chances. So I added this little shrimp feeder dish and I would drop pellets and worms in here. So when they come in to eat, they will eat it from the dish. And so far it's been really running, doing really well. She being more outgoing, take to it almost immediately. The other one, he's a little coaxing and I'm still training him with a turkey baster because both of them would eat from turkey baster and they follow it around. Another thing that you may notice is these little fish. 
So these are the Amber Tetris. And why did I add them? It's because originally I wanted to add the Amber Tetra to the 9 gallon tank versus the, uh, this is before the Cardinal Tetras. But as soon as I put them in there, they started going up to the surface and they're gasping for air. So I'm guessing that CO2 may be a little bit too high for them and I was freaking out because I know where else to put them. So I just float them real quick and release them all into this tank. Now, Amber Tetra, usually they won't, they like temperature a little bit higher because I believe they're tropical versus Exilado is like as cool water as you could get, right? I think this tank sits between 65 to 68. Long term, I'm not sure if I could keep the Amber Tetras in here, so I may swap them out with some, uh, I think White Cloud Minnows may work well. Um, but so far, they have not been bothering each other at all. I was watching, I was watching out for them. I was, first, I was worried that Exilado is going to eat them, which... I kind of accepted the risk. I was like, okay, well, they may become fish food, right? This is a really good possibility. But they, they seem to be okay. Um, number one, Exilado, I don't think they're that interested in the Tetris. And number two, I think the Tetris is too quick. Now, the second thing I was worried about is the Tetris may, be, may pick at the gill. Look at these gill, this like feathery structure. So I hear some fish actually pick at the gill. But so far, it has been three, three and a half weeks already. No indicator of that at all. Although I have to say the Amber Tetra has been pretty hard to feed. I'm not sure if they're wild caught or anything like that. But uh, recently I started feeding Daphneus and they do pick at it. Um, but beyond that, I've been trying flake food and also these uh, micro pellets. Um, no luck so far. So Daphnia has been on their diet, but I'm slowly trying to wean them over to other things. But um, yeah, really surprisingly, this Exolado tank has really captured my imagination simply because I, I mean, I want to it's a challenge, let's just say it. It's a challenge. Supposedly, Exilado is going to destroy stem plants. It's going to dig things up, make a huge mess. Uh, this game finished not too long, so it's not proven yet, but I'm really excited to see where it goes. I'm sorry I went way over on the Exilado tank. You can see that I'm really excited about it. Um, but let's move on, let's move on. Let's talk about the last thing that a lot of you guys asked me about. What is going on with the 150 gallon tank? See you over there in the other room. Hey, what's up, Reefers? Ready to see the 150 gallon tank? Here it is, ta-da! Well, basically, the progress has been stalled and let me explain why. So in the last update on this tank, you saw that me and Reef, uh, new Reefer, as well as Emily, we started building this new stand. Went perfectly, perfectly. It's perfectly level, everything is great, it's solid. We use the right screw, we switch out the top from two by four to two by six. Everything is great, everything is sound. I feel good about it. The next morning I woke up, I was like, wait a minute. I did not account for the fact that this tank is rimmed. Meaning that it's not exactly 48 inches by 24 inches. It actually sticks out a little bit because of the trim. At that point, I'm just like, are you serious? Am I gonna rebuild this one more time? So I was so upset and so frustrated. I just kind of let it sit for about two weeks before I even do anything about it. And I talked about it and I, I brainstormed my, I was like, okay, you know what? What if I put a plate over it? Would it be okay that it kind of dangles out a little bit? Thankfully, thank you to you guys, by the way. Uh, by the way, I share all these on my Instagram. Again, <laughs> Instagram is my sounding board. If you're not following me already, be sure to check it out at Inappropriate Reefer. 100% totally different content from all the videos I make. It's totally different. It's like you're following a different guy. It's, uh, yeah, just follow him. Um, so basically the, the feedback is that, you know what? The dangling part is not low bearing, so it is okay. Meaning that as long as the, um, the trim, may, may, most of it sits on this frame that is low bearing, it should be okay. As long as the side piece do not touch the ground. So all the load goes straight down, totally fine. So I'm like, okay, thank God, I don't want to do it again. But now it comes to the hard part. Now I got to crunch some number, I got to do some math. So I'm the plan, the plan, the plan is maybe do the side pieces first to extend it so that it fits the trim perfectly and then I'll cap it with a piece that covers the, the, act, the actual width and length. Ah, uh, man, if you know me, well, yeah, you guys probably know me by now. I hate DIY, I hate stuff like this. I just wanna like, I love, I love livestock. I, this, is, this is not me, I, I hate this. I should've bought like a complete set, but you know what? This is all, this is, I'm learning this trial by fire. And I went all in, I'm like, all right, well, you know what? If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this right. If I'm gonna need tools, let me just buy it because 
swear to God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it again. So I'm using this as a learning experience to do some woodworking. And right here, you know, I bought the miter saw. I'm all committed to the Milwaukee Team Red, hashtag Team Red, yay. Uh, I got the jigsaw, right, for when I put the front, front panel and I can cut out a big hole uh, for the doors. And I got the uh, sander. And the reason I got the sander is because the next step is to make sure all these parts is completely even before I put a cap on it. That means I can sand this part down a little bit, uh, all four corners. And I'm gonna do some math, crunch some numbers, I'm Asian, woo! Uh, hey math. Uh, I'm gonna put like the panels, like the side, the front, and also the back, and I'm gonna cap the whole thing, and then we're gonna paint it. My head hurts just talking about it. So that is next, and I will get to it maybe in the next few weeks. Ah, uh, yeah, let's, let's not talk about this anymore. But this is happening, this is happening. I need this up so I can stop moving things over here. This is gonna be beautiful. All right, my camera is heating up. Hey, Reefers, welcome back, and thank you for hanging out until the end. I know this is a long one, but I thought it'd be cool to get you guys up to speed on what is happening with all five of my aquariums. Now, if you made it all the way to the end, leave a bit. Now, if you made it all the way to the end, leave a comment with hashtag Hardcore Reef Squad so I know who the Hardcore Reefers are. Well, until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. The next one should be a lot of fun, so be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next week.